Hi guys, welcome back to another MCFC review on the channel where last night it finished Fulham nil, Manchester City 3 A dominant second half, should I say, by the Blues um, We got the job done last night I just said in my preview before the game that I would be very happy with a win in the clean sheet last night and that's exactly what we done, so I couldn't be any more happier Great all-round performance um, Yeah, let's go through the game now like we always do and the team and then we'll give my thoughts like I always do so um, change of formation this match a complete change of formation he didn't go Pep Guardiola he didn't go with the usual 4-3-3 he usually goes with last night he went with a, a well, which I've got written down here a 3-5-2 formation so he had the three centre backs of um, John Stones Ruben Diaz and Imeric Laporte all started together for the first ever time he had the two win backs, which were Benjamin Mendy, who got a rare start, and Joe Concello um, with Edison in goal. And then you look at the rest of the team. Um, in the two, in, in, in the centre of midfield, the two-man midfield, it was Bernardo Silva and uh, Rodri. I, I thought it was a good team. And then uh, the front three, also starting together, which we don't normally see a lot. I think the first time they've started in the league together since Middlesbrough 2017. I was at that match, I remember. Um, it was a front three of um, Ferran Torres on the right, Sergio Aguero on the centre, getting a start, and Gabriel Jesus, who played on the left all the evening. So, yeah, interesting formation, interesting team, and it seemed to work well. I believe this is the first time Guardiola has played this formation since we beat Brighton 2 0 back in 2017. So, he went with it again, and we won, and we kept the clean sheet, so you can't go wrong. Um, but that was the team um, last night. It's a change of formation. I think the reason why I changed the formation is because. We did have a brilliant defence going back a few weeks ago now, but we have conceded quite a few in our last few games, so I think he thought, oh, well, may as well change the formation, see what happens. He's done that and it worked and it paid off, luckily. I do expect him to revert back to the 4-3-3 formation, which he's been usually playing in the Champions League in midweek against Munchen Gladbach. I think this was just a one-off yesterday, the formation he played. I think he kind of looked at Fulham before the game, thought, right, this formation will work against Fulham with the way they play and... Um, He's obviously gone with it and it's worked, but I don't expect us to play this formation all the time. I think it was just a one-off personally, but yeah, let's get into the match now anyway. So, um, Fulham's lined up. I'm just going to have a look now at that. Um, we'll have a look at how they lined up. So yeah, Fulham um, last night, they lined up with Ariola in goal. Um, made a few decent saves in the match. They Tete right back. Anderson and Adaboria, the X-Man City man, are the two centre-backs. Ola Aina at left back, Anguisa, Harrison Reed, and Lamina in midfield. And a front three of uh, Luckman on the right, Caballero on the left, and Loftus Street playing as a false nine. So, yeah, they played the 4 3 3 formation. So, we obviously thought, you know, we'll go with the 3 5 2 for a change, and um, obviously Fulham played the 4 3 3 flat formation. Well, um, we expect this to work, and so it did, so you can't go wrong. But um, the game kicks off, the first half's very dull. I felt the first half, it, it obviously ends 0 0 first half. I thought, personally, in the first half, when it ended, I thought, right, this formation's not working. Maybe he needs to go back to the usual 4-3-3, plays the second half. But no, he stuck with it. Um, trying to think of any real chances in the first half. I think Torres forced Ariola into a good save, and that was really it. A very boring first half. But second half, we came out all guns blazing. Obviously, Pep's second half team talk worked, and we were straight out Fulham from the off. And they just couldn't. They done well to hold us out first half, but second half they couldn't deal with our attacking quality and threat, and that paid off. We took our chances. Um, so yeah, the second half begins, um, and straight off from the second half, um, we get a free kick. Um, it's a definite free kick. No doubts about it. Um, you know, it's a pure challenge from the Fulham man. Um, the ball's put in the box. Great delivery. I actually forgot who put the ball in. I think it was Bernardo. Who's in the centre to get in the end of the cross to get his fourth goal of the season? John Stones, lovely finish. He kind of just tore pokes it past the goalkeeper. Ariola can't save it. And I think I believe in the 46th minute, a minute in the second half, we go one nil up and you're thinking, right, we can cruise from here. So it's a great start. Considering the first half was very poor, we get that goal early second half, which is exactly what you want because not long after that, a full of mix-up. Anderson, who was good at the back at Fulham first half, Completely gets his feet mixed up, loses the ball. Who's on the end of it to make to get on the end of the mistake? Gabriel Jesus runs one on one with the keeper, 
nicely puts it past Ariola, rounds the keeper and puts it in the empty net. Great finish. I know it was a mistake from Anderson, but Jesus done absolutely fantastic to put that ball away and take the finish very well. So 2-0 up from there. Great start to the second half and you're just thinking, right, we can really cruise this game now, dominate. And then another big moment comes. Um, the X-Man City man, Ardaboria, I can't really say his name, apologies. We'll call him Tossin because um, that's his first name. Again, loses possession. Another mistake from Fulham at the back. They were shocking. They were really good defensively first half, but second half they were terrible. Loses the ball. Ferran Torres charges at him. Torres runs and runs and runs. Uh, Tossin takes him down. Completely bad mistake from him. Loses the ball, takes Torres down. As Torres darts in the penalty area, and it's a penalty kick. And this is the most clear penalty you'll ever see in your life. So who's who takes the penalty? Up steps Sergio Aguero. Hasn't scored in the Premier League since last February, I believe. So it's an 11, a 13-month run without a Premier League goal from him. Steps up, puts it in the bottom right-hand corner. Arioli guesses rightly, but the penalty is brilliant from Aguero. Bottom right-hand corner, three 0 and that's the game done. But um, dominant display by the Blues. Really good last night. Uh, we see the game out from there, we win 3 0. My star players, I'd have to go with um, my man of the match. I know Sky Sports give it, um, BT, sorry, give it to, to John Stones. I, I would agree with that, yeah. But um, I'd also like to give a shout out to Ferran Torres, who I thought was brilliant on the right wing last night as well. The whole team played well. Um, defensively, we were solid with Laporte, Stones, and Diaz. Obviously, it's a new formation. Them three playing together for the first ever time. They dealt well. Fulham didn't really put us under pressure, though, I must say. The two midfielders were brilliant, Bernardo and Rodri. The win even Mendy put in a good performance. Obviously, Mr. Unreliable, I call him. He got a rare start. I don't really expect him to start many more games this season. I think because Pep wanted to, to rotate the squad for the Champions League a bit weak, so he thought he'd give Mendy a game before, right? Fulham's a nice opponent to play him, so I'll play him against Fulham. So he'd done that. Cancelo was great at right back. Um, Jesus had a great game, threw himself about, took his goal well, really good performance. Aguero played all right. Torres was absolutely outstanding, I thought, on the right wing. So, yeah, all in all, a good win. Another great performance from John Stones as well. He's been brilliant this season. Um, substitutes who came on. Fernandinho came on for Bernardo Silva. Done all right. And then, this is something I want to talk about to wrap up the video. Um, Eric Garcia coming on for Ruben Diaz. Now, I understand Ruben Diaz needs to come off to stay fit um, for, the busy, for, the, for the games coming up. I understand that. Totally understandable, but why is Nathan Ake not in the squad when he's fully fit now? He obviously needs minutes, he's just come back from a long-term injury. Why on earth is Eric Garcia getting named in the squad over Nathan Ake when Garcia, the snake I like to call him now, no time for the lad. He signed a pre-contract contract with Barcelona for next season. He signed it a couple of weeks back. A couple of weeks back now, obviously he can't join Barcelona yet because the transfer window's closed so when it's whenever it opens is it June July he will officially become a Barcelona player then on the first day of the window a player who has no absolutely no plans who had no plans to play for Man City never did he basically made it clear last season now I think it was last June made it clear that he wanted to leave the club we offered him numerous contracts he said no to every single one of them he made it clear he wanted to sign for Barcelona. He didn't get his move there in the summer for some reason. For me, I have no time for the lad. The way he went on about it, we tried to deal with the situation well. You know, why are we even considering giving this lad minutes? He's basically a Barcelona player now. He signed a contract, a pre-contract to be a Barcelona player next season. He's, for me, he's no longer a Man City player. I'd put him in the reserves where he belongs. I would. He's not, he's not a Man City player. He's only a City player at the moment because there's no transfer window open, but he's technically a Barcelona player. But um, why he's getting minutes, I'll never know. Um, I, personally, if a player does that, I would put him in the reserves. I wouldn't want them anywhere near the first team because, you know, it can be bad. It can be a bad in, bad impact in the changing room. They're obviously not motivated to play for that team. You'd be thinking about joining Barcelona in the summer. But it's the way he went about it as well. Um, we tried to handle the situation well last June. We offered him a contract. He, he made it clear he didn't want to stay for all the good things we've done for him. And then you get people having a go at me in forums because I made this point. And um, at the end of the day, um, you know, I just can't get my head around it because 
I understand, yeah, he's 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 a Barcelona lad. He's he's born in the city, but um, I get people saying, "I'll oh, leave off him. He's a young lad. He's not a young lad. He's a full-grown man now. Um, he's a senior pro. He's turning twenty this year, I believe. So in my eyes, he's not a young lad. He's a senior pro. He has to take the criticism. I don't care about this young lad stuff. Or he's he's a Barcelona lad. He's a young lad. No, the way he went about it, he doesn't deserve any respect from me whatsoever. We tried to handle the situation, but we offered him a contract. He made, we offered him a few contracts. He made it clear he never wanted to stay at the club. Obviously, the deal to Barcelona fell through with the summer. For me, you don't even consider playing him at all. And now he signed a contract with Barcelona, a pre-contract. He signed it a few weeks back. He's finally getting what he wants. No, you don't involve him in the squad, in my opinion. Keep him well out. Leave him out on to dry. Put him in the reserves. You want bad smells like that away, in my opinion. So... I hope I don't see him again this season. I hope that was just a one-off last night. Um, he's no longer a Man City player in my eyes. He's a Barcelona player. Um, Nathan Ake, give him the minutes because he needs him. He's actually a player that's contracted to our club who wants to play for our club. He's just come back from an injury. He needs minutes. You've got to play him over Garcia. But yeah, strange one from Pep because Ake is fully fit now. But um, definitely give him the minutes more than Garcia. I know that. But um, all in all, a good win. Really happy, 17 points clear at the top of the league. Of course, United have got two games in hand, so if they win, never be back to 11. But a good win and a good performance. Up the fucking Blues get in. See you later, guys. Take care.